Fifi, show me what you got, ey. Bueno, miro cuánto cuesta lo parí a 50 y la fila está reventa, ey. Como el 23 en los 90, una estrella se detecta, cambiaron la apuesta, ey. Yo sabía que mi momento iba a llegar, yo sabía que mi momento iba a llegar. Mi sexto sentido detecta, a todo esto fica, por eso aquí no están, ey. Question from Caesar asking, how did your daily life change after you begin a professional soccer career? Uh, I'd say what changed for me the most once I became professional was just being able to eat healthier as well as just get in a nice daily routine and be able to follow that. And as you're following that, just be able to take advantage of the resources you're given, whether it's rolling out, stretching, the food they're giving you, things like that, I'd say. And also just to be able to prepare for the next day, whether it's recovering, uh, making sure you're stretching, eating right, and things like that. So would you say, was it a, a hard transition for you or was that something you kind of just came doing already for, in your college days? Uh, I would say that it's it hasn't been crazy dif difficult from the sense that in college being a Division One athlete, you're in that sort of routine every single day. Mm -hmm. And then just being able to follow that and then once you become professional, it's just focusing on soccer, whereas in college you had to balance school, soccer, and a social life. Now it's just all just soccer. Just professional. Exactly, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, this question is from Miguel. Who was your favorite coach growing up and why? I would say my favorite coach growing up at soccer's was Todd Bailey. He was my first academy coach. Uh, he was just kind of that one guy, like I was a young sophomore in high school and he was like the only coach who believed in me like knew what my work ethic was about right. things like that and then throughout that time he always just wanted to get the absolute best out of me and i was able to give him the absolute best too which we built a good relationship off of and i still not only is he a good role model but a great coach and someone i still remain in contact with today I think it's pretty cool where you have that one coach. I think everyone has that one coach that was not necessarily your favorite, but somebody that you know took you to that level that you need, that you need to be taken. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Just like having that one guy believe in you just goes such a long way. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. So definitely the relationships that last forever. You yeah. Know? All right, this question's from Fabian. Messi or Ronaldo, and why? You asking me, or you want me to start off? Or? Uh, yeah, let's hear your input. So, Messi or Ronaldo and why? Um, try not to be biased, I'm a Barcelona fan, but I, I truly believe that, that Messi is the, the better. Really? Just because I saw this quote, and it really stuck with me, it said, um, Ronaldo gets compared to Messi, but Messi gets compared to the history. So, to me, it's like, He's the go to me, and what he, I think he does more for his team than Ronaldo does. You know? Yeah, I, I'm the opposite. I'm a Ronaldo fan, and I just also like, I like how he just has that pizzazz to him. Like Messi's more of a timid player, but ferocious, doesn't say a whole lot. Ronaldo just has that flair and that pizzazz to him and then also just what he's done at whatever club he goes to whether it's Man U, whether it's Real Madrid, whether it's Juve he's done all sorts of crazy things at all sorts of levels in different leagues okay see I respect it completely yeah. you know this you know you can look at, at many different sides you know a lot of people will respect the loyalty that Messi's had yeah. in Barcelona which not many players have these days 
it's very tough. I think we're, we're, I'm very grateful that we could both, you know, watch them in this era together and just break all types, types of records, you know. Exactly. It's pretty, we'll never see that again, I feel like. Yeah. Not in a long time. 100%. For Juan from Aki, best advice you'd give someone that's planning on starting their own business? Yeah, it's a tough question. There's, there's a lot of things that go into starting a business. But I feel like for me, the most important thing when starting a business is just make sure you love what you do. You know? yeah. There's going to be days where it's going to be long hours and it's only going to be you by yourself with no one else to help you out. And that's when that true passion comes out, whether you do really love what you do. And if you do, you're going to do everything you can to take your business to the next level or do whatever it takes to be successful. Exactly. So, that's my advice. I don't know. You started your own business too, uh, your sock company. What do you yeah. Think? Uh, I just recently started my small business, Stuck In. Uh, it's an athletic performance sock. And just being able to, whether you're focused on maximizing profits, it's not going to go a long way if you're not enjoying it. Whereas if you're around, around people who do believe in what you're talking about, do believe in your philosophy and those sorts of things, then it just makes starting a business that much better. Whereas you're just struggling, not enjoying things, then... I know, I completely agree. Um, it's, definitely, it's definitely hard, you know. I'm sure you've gone through your own obstacles with this, but, you know, it's, if you truly believe in it, Nothing else matters, you know? Exactly. There's always going to be people that are going to try to bring you down or you're going to try to convince you not to do something. But yeah, and if you believe in it, you just get want to get the most out of it that exactly. much more. Yep. So. This question is from Javi to me. Is the MLS at a high level? What does the team boot room look like? Uh, yeah, I'd say MLS is at a high level. I mean, it still has a lot of growing to do compared to European soccer, but it is the best soccer league in North America and the U.S. right now. Okay. And, um, so, how would you compare the level of the MLS to the college level? It's definitely a lot higher. I mean, you get where in college you'll have a few good guys on some teams, and you'd have to build around what the people you have, whereas MLS, everybody's a great player, everybody's dying to win, whereas sometimes college guys, they just are doing it to have that extra activity on their resume or okay. something that uh, they can use to build relationships with friends. Sometimes people don't usually look to play professional after playing college soccer. So. That's true, that's true. And what does the team boot room look like? Uh, it's just a lot of it's a lot of different colored shoes. I mean, some people uh, are sponsored on our team, and there are a lot of a lot of Adidas cleats, Nike cleats, Puma cleats, and a lot of people are very specific on how they want their boots. Some are like really stiff, some are loose. Uh, some people like the higher ankle socks, some like lower, so there's a lot of different variety depending on the type of player you are as well. So you like your, your cleats of fit, like what's the type of fit that you're looking for? Now? Yeah, I mean, I got a really narrow foot, <laughs> so uh, I like really thin shoes and not a lot of material on them, so it has that like on the foot feeling okay. to it. So well, I heard a lot of pros like to go a half size down on the cleats. Because they, they say that they have a better shot with a tight tight grip on their shoe. Really? But I yeah. don't know if that's true. Um, For me, I I don't go down a half size. I actually double sock. So it I still have that thickness. And that way I'm not also not able to get blisters and things like that. Right. So I double sock. I, I have more comfort to it. But I'm still getting that thin, tight feeling as well. Gotcha. This question is from you, from Mark. How did you become arguably the best barber in North America? Because I Mark, agree with him. You agree with him? Man, thank you, thank you, Mark. <laughs> I don't think I'm there. I'm aiming for it, but you know, I'm, I'm lucky. I have a lot of a lot of clients that respect my work and always follow me wherever I go. 
always making sure they're trying to get a cut with me and I'm, I'm very blessed you know, I do this because I love it. There's nothing like getting a fresh cut, man. Just coming out of the shop with loads of confidence. You know? Exactly. That's what it's all about. But uh, I'm not quite there yet, but one day we'll see. Question comes from Eric asking, how did y'all meet? How did we meet? Uh, yeah, so the day before I was getting drafted, I, need a, I needed a haircut. And I uh, didn't know anybody in the area because I always got my haircut in Milwaukee. And then... When you were at school? Yeah. And then one of my friends, Dave, who's your best friend, put me on with you. And then once I showed up, got my hair cut, uh, we, we were talking a while, and it turns out one of my good friends when I was younger... My and, cousin. Yeah, is Juan's cousin. And then we had a lot of connections with soccer, growing up in the same area. We live about five, six minutes crazy. away from each other, so it's just like a small world. Fifi, show me what you got, ey. Bueno, miro cuánto cuesta los parís a 50 y la fila está reventa, ey. Como el 23 en los 90, una estrella se detecta, cambiaron la apuesta, ey. Yo sabía que mi momento iba a llegar, yo sabía que mi momento iba a llegar. Mi sexto sentido detecta, a todo esto fica, por eso aquí no están, ey. De madre buena en la tuya, coya no me agrada. Sin un blog, ya, ya, ya. Le hice un par de pistas en vivo. Carle con el bajo, apretó con esta rola. No se ve, no soy Ronald de Machete con el cielo. Yeah. Nacimos bendecidos, no con suerte. Cabrones, esto es tu valenta man Con los fucking sunshine. Brully con los chacos. Se los pegué, pero por mi plata me perdono. En el Lambo voy como la bala de mi glock. Carolina me enseñó a hacerle todo. Tengo un par de envidiosos. Yo, 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 yo no miro cuánto cuesta los parís a 50 y la fila está reventa. Eh. Como el 23 en los 90, una estrella se detecta. Cambiaron la 